100 cosine of 45 degrees. Those will add together to give negative 953.6 pounds, and that's going to have to be my FC. So if I wanted to try to draw that, I would draw it as a force that has 353 in the plus x would be 400 in the plus y. <coughs> so those would add together to give me something like that. And then in addition, I have a force of 900. with the sum of those first two is going to give me a force that looks something like this. It's going to go in the plus x, the plus y, and the negative z direction. Hmm. Now the magnitude of that resultant force would be the square root of 353.6 squared plus 400 squared plus 953 squared. As far as direction, I can't conveniently describe that. I can give the angles with respect to the coordinate directions. Do you remember how to do that? The angle that this resultant force makes with the x-axis <laughs> The cosine of theta x is the x component of the force divided by the magnitude of the force. Because if we take f dotted with i, that is going to be fx, the product of the x components plus the product of the y components plus the product of the z components. Of course, the y and z components of the unit vector here are going to be zero. But the dot product can also be written as the magnitude of the first vector times the magnitude of the second vector times the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. That's the angle between the x direction and the force f. So if you just divide by the magnitude, we get the cosine of the angle between the force f and the x direction is fx divided by the magnitude of the force f. And we can do the same thing with the y and the z direction. And that's really the only good way of describing the direction of this force. We still have to find the moments. So just as I did here, to find the x, y, and z components of the force. Well, finding the components here separately is a little bit harder. I think what I will rather do is I'll just say, what is the sum of moments about O treating it as a vector on the first picture? So if I do that, for the 400 pound force, the R vector going from the point I'm taking moments about to the point where the force is applied, I'm going to have to go seven feet to get to where the curve starts. And then the radius of this circle is another three feet. So I'm going to have to go up 10 feet to get to the top of that post. <coughs> And then I'm going to have to go three feet in the plus x direction once I get to the top. So the moment is going to be 3i plus 10k crossed with 400j. That's for the first force. I'll do the 600 pound force next. I'm going to go up seven feet. Then I'm going to come out six feet, 
And finally, I'll go three feet in the plus y. So it's going to be six in the plus x. It's going to be three in the plus y. It's going to be seven in the plus c. And that has to be crossed with the negative 600k pound force. And finally, for the remaining force, I again go 7 feet in the plus z. I go 6 feet in the plus x. But this time, I go 3 feet in the negative y direction. <coughs> And that has to be crossed with the components, the x and z components of the 500 newton force. Well, here is the x component, and there is the z component. They have the same magnitude. One's in the plus x, the other's in the negative z. So it's going to be 353.55i minus 353.55 K and I evaluate all those cross products. I cross J is K. K cross J is minus I. So I'm going to get 1200 K and then minus 4000 I. And I'll do the same thing with the other cross products. What I end up with what I'm going to end up with is negative 4739 I plus 8196 J plus 2261K pound foot. So this is the moment of the original three forces to cause a rotation around O. What's the moment about O on my new picture? It's equal to MXI plus MYJ plus MZK. So this has to be the MX. This part has to be the MY. And this part has to be the MZ of my equivalent force couple. I'm trying to find the force and moment at O which has the same tendency to push in the x direction, the same tendency to push in the y direction, same tendency to push in the z direction, same tendency to cause a rotation around O, same sum of moment. Any questions on that? That's the equivalent force couple at O. I'd like to take this one step further except I'm going to chicken out because it's just more work than I want to do. I would like to replace this with the, with the resultant, the simplest of all possible equivalent force couples. So what would I do there? Again, here is that piece coming up, the cross arm going over, and I had a coordinate system, x, y, and z. <coughs> so I want to replace this with a force couple that has the same effect, and I want it to be as simple as possible. Now we know that once we find the, the resultant, we can slide the force along this line of action without changing the effect. So the resultant is not totally unique. I can say I would like to find the equivalent force couple, and I would like to figure out 
where on the xy plane should that be located to have the same effect. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the equivalent force couplet O and I'm going to try to say, well, that's the effect to cause rotation around O. What if the force was over here? What if the Fx and the Fy and the Fz, which is a negative number, what if they were over here? What force, or where would it have to be put to get rid of the moment around O? This has a force at O and a moment about O. Here the force is at some new location, let's call that new location C, but I want that force to still have the same tendency to push, so the Fx is still going to have to be 353.6, the Fy is still going to have to be 400, and the Fz is still going to have to be minus 953.6. But when I move it over there, I want to find out where can I put it so that I don't need any moment anymore. Where can I put that force to have the same moment around the origin? Well, how do I calculate that? I calculate the moment around the origin as R cross F, where R now is going to be Xi plus Yj plus 0k crossed with the 353.6i plus 400j minus 953.6k. So that's the moment of my new force around O, and I want to set that equal to the moment around O that I had before. I want to set that equal to negative 473, 4739i plus 8196j plus 2261k. Can anyone see any problem with that? <coughs> I'm, I'm crossing two vectors in R and F, and I'm setting it equal to something else. So hopefully the length of the, the cross product is going to come out to be the same as the length of what I'm getting at. But when I calculate this cross product, I'm going to have x, y, and z components. I've got x, y, and z components. So the x component of the cross product has to be negative 4739. The y component of the cross product has to be 8196. The z component of the cross product has to be 2261. I've got three equations. How many unknowns are there in those three equations? Only two, x and y. Can you solve three equations with two unknowns? Can you solve two equations with three unknowns? That one's a definite no. How about three equations, two unknowns? Yes. Sometimes you can, but it's not guaranteed. And in fact, no choice of x and y will satisfy all three equations. Why not? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set R cross F equal to MO. Now the result of the cross product has to be a vector that's perpendicular to R and perpendicular to O, a perpendicular to F. But the M that I've got over here is not perpendicular to F. I don't know what, what the direction of R is going to be because I haven't yet figured out X and Y. 